All right, so now that we solved this, uh, this brings our attention to triple product. So the product A dot B cross C in brackets that occurs in property five is called the scalar triple product of the vectors A, B, and C. And notice from property five, from the property five proof that we can write the scalar triple product as a, as a determinant. So notice here we have this cross product, then we have this A1 times by A2, A3. Etc. In other words, that's, this is just a, a determinant. So we could write this as in determinant form a dot b in bracket b cross c is equal to, and this is just going to be a1, a2, a3, and then b1, b2, b3, and then c1, c2, c3. Like that. All right, going further, uh, the geometric significance of the scale or triple product can be seen by considering the parallel piped, uh, and the, I'll show you the shape soon. Uh, it's basically a 3D rhombus <laughs> uh, determined by the vectors A, B, and C as shown in the figure below. So let's take a look at this figure and then I'll explain what this all means. So let's say you have the vector goes like this is A, then you have the vector B, like this, and then you have the vector C like that. So that's a vector C, and then you have a, a parallelogram across like this. So there's a parallelogram, but then it's in 3D now. We have a 3D parallelogram like this, matching matches up with this, and then. It goes all the way across, whoops, like this, and then just goes across like that, and then goes like that. All right, let's just now draw the inside like this. It's gonna go something like this, and then this goes up like that. All right, here I just quickly fixed up uh, this uh, parallel pipe, so it looks like something like that. And now if we draw the cross product of B and C, which is perpendicular to it, and go up somewhere like this, let's say this is the cross product. Uh, this is B cross C, like that. And the height here is gonna be H. So from here, let's put the, like this. From here to here is gonna be H. And I'm gonna draw this angle uh, theta, like that. All right, and uh, I'll just draw a dashed line across there. So that's the height of this parallel pipe, and that's the shape right here, basically a, a 3D rhombus. So the area of the base of the parallelogram, uh, of the base right here, is A, which again is parallelogram across here, like that. Uh, that is just uh, B cross C. That's just a cross product of these two vectors. So if theta is the angle between A and the B cross C vector, then the height H is going to equal to, is going to equal to uh, H. Yeah, then, then the height H equals to, well, the length A times cosine theta. In other words, adjacent of hypotenuse. So we'll have, uh, yes, here's just a, a sign recall you'll have adjacent I'll just put a cosine theta equals 2 and if this is a right angle triangle adjacent which is h over hypotenuse which is uh, absolute value of a over the length of the a vector we so moved it over to, across to there so I'll just put that here so cosine or recall Cosine theta equals to h over like that. I'll just fix that up and then move this over to there and you get our h value. And note that we must use the absolute value cosine instead of cos uh, in, in case cosine theta is greater than pi over 2. And uh, I'll put this absolute value sign like that. And uh, yeah, there's absolute value sign there. And that's because if you recall, cosine goes like, uh, cosine goes like this becomes negative past the, past the pi over 2, like that. And uh, here I'm just going to draw that out, so recall, because we didn't do one for cosine in this video, but we've done this <laughs> many times before. 
other videos. So it goes like this and that. So this is pi over two. It's theta. This is why this is our cosine theta. Yeah, just fix that up. Cosine theta. And this is plus, then becomes negative uh, past this cosine pi. Yeah, past pi over two there. Oh, so, so then, therefore, the volume of the parallel piped is, well, it's just going to be this area times by the height of it. And uh, because it's all paralleled uh, here, you could view it as just a giant, um, as a giant 3D rectangle and uh, the height there. And whenever you shift it, you're not changing anything. You could view this as a, just a perfect uh, block of uh, rectangular block. Where you you can have the height here, and then you just uh, shift everything. So if you, if you were to, or actually instead of the, this way, oops, yeah. So if you were to uh, s straighten this all out to make this into a rectangular block, uh, you would just have this shifted across here, the shift over everything, and it's just going to be height h. And this would be all parallel, exactly like it. And yeah, so and then you could uh, view it as basically having a rectangular block and then shifting it accordingly, and nothing actually changes. Yeah, so basically the area is going to, I mean, the volume is going to be this area times by this height. All right, let's continue further. So therefore, the volume of the parallel piped is uh, V equals to A times H, which equals to, well, cross product is the area of the base. AC, I mean, B cross C. Then the height is a times by cosine theta. Yeah, so if you scroll up here, so there's the height h is equal to uh, the length a times cosine theta. And so would you have this? And note, this is just a dot product. Yeah, so in other words, uh, this is just a vector, length of vector, b cross c, and then times by length of this vector a, and then times cosine theta. That's just, again, dot. This is just literally the dot product. And what I'm doing is I'm going to switch these around because these are just lengths. These are just basic multiplication of lengths. Switch them around so that we can write it in the form we're used to. So then uh, we'll switch those around. We could write this as a, um, yeah, a uh, length of a times by length of the cross product b cross c, and then cosine theta absolute value. Again, this is dot product. This equals two a dot in this vector. So this vector dot uh, b cross c in bracket like that. And there's what we have. This is the triple product. So the triple product is a volume of the, of the parallel pipe. All right, so thus we have proved the following formula. So formula of a parallel pipe. The formula of the parallel pipe determined by the vectors a, b, and c yeah, is the magnitude of their scalar triple product. That is volume of the parallel pipe is equal to a dot is it's the length of the or the magnitude or the uh, absolute size of the uh, a dot b bracket a uh, bracket b cross c like that. Absolutely fascinating stuff here. And uh, here a note on it is uh, if we use the above formula and discover that the volume of the parallel pipe determined by A, B, and C is zero, then the vectors must lie in the same plane. That is, uh, they are coplanar. And in other words, this A would be on the same plane and there's no volume. It would just all be zero. All right, now let's take a look at an example again. So example five, use the scalar triple product to show that the vectors a, which is 1, 4, uh, negative 7, and b, which is 2, negative, uh, negative 1, 4, and c, which is 0, negative 9, and 18 are coplanar. In other words, all in the same plane. So let's take a look at the solution. We, we can use the determined formula to compute their triple product. Or instead of saying can, or we just say we use the, the determinant formula to uh, uh, to compute their scalar triple product. So in other words, uh, again, remember, uh, the scalar triple product is just a dot b cross c, and then you can write this in determinant formula. And then we know our a is gonna be one for negative seven. And then our b is gonna be two, negative one, four. And then c is zero, negative nine, 
Yeah, 18 plus 18. Let's double check. So we have 1, 4, negative 7, and then 2, negative 1, 4, and then 0, negative 9, 18. All right, now let's write this in this uh, second order determinant form for completeness. This equals 2. Well, we get this 1 there, and then cross out everything there. So we put a 1 and write this down here. So it's going to be negative 1, 4, negative 9, and then 18. And then determine the there. The next one's going to be, erase this, erase this. This is uh, negative 4 because it's the middle one. Cross out, cross out. We get a 2, 4, 0, 18, like this. And then the next one is negative 7. And then we cross out, cross out. Get a 2, negative 1, 0, negative 9, like this. All right, so we have this. And then the next one is going to be, well, this times this, and then subtract by this, by that, uh, multiply. So anyways, so we get a 1 times it by negative uh, 18, negative 1 times uh, 18, and then minus, and then it becomes, um, yeah, minus, uh, negative becomes positive, so 9 times 4 is 36, like that minus 4, now we have a 2 times 18 is 36, minus 4 times 0, uh, 0, like that. And then the next one is minus 7 times by negative 18, then minus plus 0. We get minus negative 1 times 0, 0, like that. So we get that, and then let's see what we have here. All right, so uh, negative 18 plus 36, same thing as writing 36 minus 18, that's just 18. And then this one here, 4 plus 36, and then 36 is just uh, 18 times 2. So what I'll do here is just get everything as a factor of 18. So then this could be 2 times 4 is 8. So we'll have a minus 8 times 18, like this. Now the next one is, well, this negative is canceled, becomes plus 7 times by 18. So we have 18, yeah, so 18 minus 8 times 18 plus 7 times 18. In other words, uh, this and this would be 8. Yeah, so this, uh, this one and this will be 8 times 18. Then minus 8 times 18 <laughs> this equals to 0. All right, so this is 0. So this is a coplanar. They're all on the same plane. Because their triple product, their uh, scalar triple product is zero. All right, so therefore the volume of the parallel pipe determined by A, B, and C is zero. This means that A, B, and C are coplanar on the same plane, so there's no volume. All right, it's very, very fascinating. So now let's continue further. So the product A cross B, A cross and then bracket B cross C, that's property six right here. This one here, A cross and then B cross C. This is called, let's go here. This is, the, that occurs in property six is called a vector triple product of A, B, and C. And property six will be used to derive Kepler's first law of planetary motion in my future video. So stay tuned for that. And its proof, uh, it's left, uh, you know, it, its proof is, yeah, let's fix that up. Its proof is shown in exercise five at the end of this video. That's very fascinating.